Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Pegasus IPA from Argus Brewing Company of Chicago, Illinois here on this rainy afternoon. Um, I have driven close to this company along the interstate. I've been driving around north of it by Chicago State University. Um, but I'm not too familiar with that area. Anyway, doesn't matter. This was given to me, given to me by John Sharon, Zone One Beer Reviews. He gave this to me in New Orleans. He's up there in Indiana. He's close to Illinois. They get a lot of stuff we can't get. We get a lot of stuff they can't get. They said their brewery is located at the historic Joseph Schlitz Distribution Stable from the early 1900s. You know, Joseph Schlitz Brewing was bought out in 1982, and over the years their assets were sold off to different companies or just abandoned or whatever. Their brands are still alive. Uh, the Schlitz, Schlitz Malt Liquor Line, um, Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Light, a lot of them have been discontinued anyway. This was started as a father and son team, Bob and Patrick. Started uh, Argus. Don't know what year, they don't say on the website that I could find. It says, this India Pale Ale is a rather British beer. English malts and hops from the UK and the US. Don't say what kind though. It's not your typical hop bomb, but a more balanced approach to IPA. Okay, interesting, 6.2% alcohol, they don't give the IBU. So that'll be, That'd be uh, something to see if I can figure out what it is. Of course, how would I ever verify it? Brewed in Chicago Argus. Okay, thank you, John. There's one video review, I think, Professor Suds. He's no longer doing reviews, sort of defunct. Um, well, he is defunct. He did really short videos, usually about 45 seconds. Going through each thing, give a score, off. Uh, I don't see a date, guys. That ain't good. How old is this beer? How new is it? Couldn't tell you. That's some smoke. With India Pale Ale, you oftentimes want to know the date more so than other styles. But we're not going to be able to do that here. Medium, slightly off-white head. Oh yeah, it is. It is off-white head. An orange appearance, kind of brilliant with the light shining at it and through it. Lots of powdery sediment throughout. Don't. Well, you wouldn't really. There's no crackle that I can tell. But it's. The rain's making a lot of noise, so you wouldn't be able to tell that anyway. Especially raining on that aluminum car. Carport cover. So, beer advocate saying it's okay. Great beer saying like 35 out of 100 and a 6 out of 100 for the style. Neither site has up to 100 reviews, so this is not a well covered beer. I'm trying to get a handle on the aroma, it's hard to describe. It's uh, sort of pungent. A little sourness, uh, like uh, sourdough bread or something, I don't know. Maybe a little bread crust, like uh, Sara Lee, that honey bread, bread crust, something like that. It's a smell I've encountered before, but I can't place it and I can't relate it. And I had never heard of this company before John bought this down here, okay? 
caramel, sweet white bread, bread crust, which is from the malts, very mild hop oils, the caramel, the candy, the toffee, um, It has a very similar flavor and aroma to the Shipyard Fuggles IPA. Now that's what it's making me think of. And I think Shipyard is about 6.2% alcohol. I don't know, is this using Fuggles IP, uh, um, hops? Hmm. Now a lot of people get really angry about Shipyard IPA because it's so different from the last 20 years of IPA, which is the West Coast style mostly, but super hops, which I like when they're done right. And, but the Fuggles is, you know, the shipyard is kind of unusual and just people, they don't like it. Okay, um, but that's that British. India Pale Ale style, which is the original India Pale Ale style, which is so different from the American conception of it. And it's really two different styles, really three or four or five different styles, sub styles. Um, the body here is medium. It's probably three and a half out of five sugar cubes on the Cyclops scale, and probably three out of five. Popcorns. It's a little more bitter than you would expect by reading that label. The bitterness builds here and it builds in a good way. It's like a straight up kind of bitter bitterness. Straightforward bitterness. Not too fruity here. A little fruit, a little like mango. <laughs> mango or apricot. Okay. And I believe I've remarked about that with shipyards. Um, here's, um... The finish is on the dry side, it's easy drinking, and it's very well done. Very well done. Kind of in the realm of the Valentine, but more mellow in the bitterness and the overall body and flavor. The Valentine IPA. In the vein of the Bass IPA, which didn't last long, Bass from Anheuser-Busch InBev. That was an interesting British style IPA, and, and I noticed that a lot of the criticisms for that were similar to the ones for the uh, Shipyard Fungal IPA. Yeah, I would go with an A on this. I think it's most excellent. I can't think of any complaining. Anything I could complain about, uh, honestly, I'm glad he brought it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice one to try if you ever see it, and maybe you will could be common in your area. It's unheard of here. But if you ever see it, buy it and try it, you, you might like it. On the other hand, you might say, you're crazy. An A? Uh-uh. No, it's it's like Beer Advocate saying a C. Okay, but I think it's an A. Most excellent. So, les les bon tournelet. Really fine looking product. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to New Orleans!